family business? Yeah, since I was a child. And so they still. Yeah. You still what? Do it? Um, yeah, it makes hey, money. He, here's a philosophy teacher. Oh, you are? Yeah, they pay him to do to play to play philosophy. Mm, yeah. Right? He, I I thought it was amazing in the dream. Yeah. Where the symbol from your parents' job. Yeah, yeah, reappeared. Makes you have to go pick those up. You're forced mm -hmm. after the high state, mm -hmm. and uh, and you nail it on the head by you know the job. Yeah. You know you have to do your job. Yeah. And that scene, the uh, family is reaching. And the description of the girl who turned and said, I'm leaving him because he doesn't understand me. That was, was that, great, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so what do you see? What do you see? Mm. Well, what have you been talking about? Are um, people understanding you? Or, well, you answer that. I yeah. Know. yeah. Yes, yes. They kind of understand me. They kind of, they've got... They've gotten used to the way I've changed and thought. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. felt like I could be more open with them, and um, they're more they're more open to like like using the same stuff that I'm wearing to help myself. Yeah. Anybody want coffee? Yeah. I have it right here. I'm nursing it. Yeah, do that. Ah. Did you like me? You're good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was interesting to end with fear. Uh -huh. And then you went back to the fear. I was almost thinking, you said it was all here. I was wondering if the fear made you need to take a pee. Uh -huh. No. Okay. I was just... No, but there's actually a funny backstory to that. Because I, I think when I woke up from that, Pee, like I, I, when I woke up worried, it's because in other dreams I had woken up, in one dream specifically, I had woken up in the dream to go use the restroom, and then I had actually woken up, and I'm like, like I started peeing, I'm like, oh no. So I, I, I had, I felt like, I felt played by my dream, so ever since that one dream, I've been scared of like, waking, of like peeing in dreams. <laughs> you know, be sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, now that you no, he's a philosopher. What, what do you want to ask him? He's open to any question. I happen to know him. I know him well. He's a musician, too. Mm. I don't know. And you don't have to take him up on <laughs> I'm not afraid to say what I don't know. I'm not... Well, I, I definitely have some questions. What was the name of the group again? Oh, Sorcery of the Spectacle. Sorcery but you, you you can't be on the Reddit because the Reddit is completely different than the group than their than the group messaging system. And mm -hmm. the guy who used to run it basically left, but he still has his archive of like uh, like recordings, audio recordings on there on the group chat. So if you ever wanted to listen to those, awesome. Yeah. And you said they they've all figured out all this postmodern modern stuff goes back to Neoplatonism. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What ideas in particular, do you know? Um, uh, there's one specifically, it's kind of like the body as the myth, which is like um, mythic representations are just like kind of like bodily communications. So it's, um, it's, it's naturally belongs to a kind of analogical reasoning to it. Um, but it's also kind of irrational, but it's, it's kind of like, um, it's a point, it's supposed to point us to something more authentic, ideally, or something, a way to kind of like live in the world, or, uh, how to live kind of balanced, it's the way they look at the mythic sense, or like, the bodily sense, where the body and the myth has kind of been ignored in culture. So they, it's kind of more like a regression to the body and the myth. Because the, the way they look at logic was as a kind of like natural pathology, where um, logic has categorized and standardized 
um, ideas, and out of these ideas, we form like architecture and bureaucracy that is kind of like um, made, like kind of alienated humanity from like from myth and body itself through the over usage of logic, because logic acts as a kind of like um, um, is like patho pathologically generative, and then it creates. Um, a lot of categories that that are kind of baseless without their myth, that, and they kind of like um, where the like the model itself usurps the myth, or like the actual meaning in the myth, and it's trying to understand how to return back to something that's more meaningful rather than being stuck in the kind of like empty symbols of reality created by uh, runaway logic. So the body yeah. itself, uh, it has a logic to it. Yeah, an analogical one, rather than like a pure like, um, rather than like just like standardized categories. Does that make sense? So regular logic, standardized categories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just analogical. Yeah, yeah. And so the myth and the body. Yeah. It's just, it's, yeah, it's trying to return back to a kind of sense of personal meaning. Mm -hmm. um, is, is, is the body a myth? I think they look as, I think they look like myth itself is like kind of like, uh, the body attempting to rationalize something. Rather than like, people generate culture that generates a myth. It's the myth that generates, it's like the myth that kind of comes out of the irrationality of the body gives rise to culture and gives rise to logic. I think that's more what they were trying to go to. And so logic itself is a product of this. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. analogic yeah. is hopefully getting out of that. Or using it again. Yeah, it, more, more like balancing it. Because the way he, uh, the way the guy described it, Zooming, um, was that the the West essentially killed off the mythic and had like a logic centered reality that kind of left behind a sense of like real through like through kind of like dogmatic bureauc like bureaucracies. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm fascinated. This is amazing. Yeah, and so. Myth is yeah. analogy. Yeah. And that was cut off. Yeah. In place of logic. Yeah. And so you want to get back into yeah, yeah. the analogy. Yeah. Analogic. Yeah. How, how do we get back? Um, they didn't have good solutions, but for the most part, I think it was just like. Um, to live locally and simply, rather than like kind of give yourself off, rather than giving yourself off to like politics or bureaucracy itself, or like uh, any kind of like um, any kind of like um, ideology, to return back to like your own local decision making. Personal. Yeah, the personal. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, does yeah. that include the self? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big concept yeah, in yeah. ideology. Yeah, yeah. To return back to the self. Not not self as an ideology, but self as kind of like a mythic idea. Um, yeah, because one of the main, like, like to them, like the, like the origin of like uh, logic was kind of like the standardization of the vowels in, um, during, Plato's, during Plato's time. That kind of started kind of like the birth of standardized word, where things were no longer memorized by kind of like biological memory, and a kind of like a, uh, the, like a secretive police, like a secretive priest class. Things are more like a, like you could share standard like like the standardization of the alphabet standardized categories themselves, and from there things kind of rolled on. Yeah, we were. We were having some fun earlier talking about the Phaedrus at the end of the Phaedrus with Jeff. Uh -huh. And uh, 
the difference between oral mm -hmm. words versus the written word mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I forget the last name. Thoth? Thoth? He's trying to sell the king of Egypt mm -hmm. on this new idea called writing. Mm -hmm. And it's there to help their memory. Mm -hmm. But the king of Egypt is too smart. Mm -hmm. And he says, no, that's actually going to ruin our memory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and so it's kind of an interesting. Yeah, is that mm -hmm. one of the yeah things of Plato? You guys have yeah, that was a yeah. Because some moderns and, and I know it's it's connected to modern philosophy. Some moderns want to say mm -hmm. like Derrida, right? He wants to say uh, mm -hmm. it's the written one's just fine, and mm -hmm. so I don't prefer the written over the oral. Mm -hmm. But I think in the dialogue they say it's the oral over the written. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what would happen if we change logic classes into analogy classes? Mm. This is the, the good curiosity. Mm. I, I've, wondered, I've often huh? wondered how you would do that. I almost tried to figure out if uh, logic itself was somehow just analogy. But I a, haven't seen A distorted it. analogy, actually. Yeah. Uh, say again? Distorted analogy. The, the universal affirmative. Okay, the Barbara syllogism. Right, right. It, it, that one seems to be an analogy, but it's distorted. I like the word seems. <laughs> they do teach. They do teach that Mil Miller analogy course, and there is a book that they teach it at some high school up in up north, where they help the students learn analogy, analogical reasoning and thinking. There's certain books, but yes. most often Miller Analogy, when they take that book, those that particular book, if you learn it, gets you into the more elite schools. And and that's the test they use to get into the right. elite Your schools. Right, MATs. Right. And there used to be a, a friend of mine at Golden West College who had a course in, in this very subject, analogy, and did a beautiful job. But part of what this woman did, she, for some good reason, she let them do an a IQ test. She never collected it, but they had to keep it from the first day. At the end of the course, nearly every single student in the class had at least a 20-point jump in IQ. Wow. Mm. And that's the book. And some, you know, they some made do. quantum jumps. Mm -hmm. um, but you could bring it back. You could argue for it. Induction. Yeah. If that's the case, if they, you could demonstrate that it's increasing their intellectual level and if you can demonstrate that they're getting into more elite schools having put no. GWC on the map. Let me, let me ask you a question. Have a little fun for a moment. Sure. And increase your own yeah, they, movement to... Uh, it's it's supposed to be half of it. Huh? It's supposed to be half of it. Induction. How would you answer that? What kind of motion can represent a how does how can you understand a fourth dimension in terms of a three dimension motion? What kind of motion can represent a third dimension? Okay. C. H. Hinton did a tremendous piece of writing 
And Peter D. Uspensky used that idea to create the great work he did called Tertium Organum. You know what he did? He said, the principle is recursion, a recursive movement. What does that mean? Look here. He said, take a square, build a cube, And he said, if you want to show a fourth dimension, then you have to follow this principle that a point moving in a direction not contained in itself creates a line. That's a movement from one into one dimension. By the way, a line <clears throat> moving in a direction not contained in itself becomes a surface. Mm -hmm. By the way, a surface moving in a direction not contained in itself is a three-dimensional object. Right? So he said, uh, you have to then consider the possibility of a translation of a three-dimensional figure into a fourth. How do you do it? He said, consider the fourth dimension as unknown, right? and you move, therefore, the object in terms of that. Okay, look here. That would be taking this side and uh, swinging it around, leaving it stationary along this axis. So therefore, you would have, by the way, the same thing would be true of the back, because the same principle as this itself would have to. Oh, by the way, so uh, now that's the back. By the way, you can do the same thing, all right, <clears throat> uh, with the lateral translation on both sides. And now we can do it with the back, right? So what would you do if you moved it, therefore, you would then move it in itself, right? If you move it in itself, then this is the back, this is the back. Therefore, the back becomes the front. By the way, do you know what you would be doing then by transforming a three-dimensional cube into this figure? The principle of symmetry in nature is a movement of a three-dimensional into a fourth-dimensional. So all nature is, you're seeing symmetry wherever nature flourishes, do you not? Hey, by the way, the whole body, right? We can do the same thing. Okay, watch now. Let's do something, if that's true. Um, a is to B, I mean analogy, as B is to C, right? Uh, <clears throat> if it turns into itself, right, you would be, uh, you'd be moving uh, in a very curious way. Uh, C, B, B, A. Oh, by the way, if you make the rules of transformation and analogy, B is to A as C is to B, that's equally true. You'd be running it through this. Therefore, you would have B, running it backwards, is to C, right? As, as uh, A is to B. 
And hey, look here. The next analogy would be B is to C as A is to B. The converse of that is B is to C is to B as B is to A. Um, so that, look here, you would be transforming each one of these. By the way, could you not, could you not uh, do it this way as well? Could you not do it this way as well? Another transform it in all of these relationships, would you not? Would you not? Oh, what does that in principle show? Symmetry. Symmetry. But wait a minute. Then the transformation of this is always the same thing. Well, that's rather curious. Uh, uh, C is to B as B is to A, right? If you push it through, right? Well, wait a minute. That's the same as this. Wait a minute. Would that follow? that all of these turn out to be exactly the same if they're transformed? Um, huh? Yes. Well, then you're cre Hey, wait a minute. We can fold that, can we not, to create a cube? And it would show the same thing. Oh, the only thing we're missing is the back. Because you need, right, one, two, three, four, five, six. You need six sides. So the back could easily be shown to have the same principle. But wait a minute. Then there's only one form of the analogy that remains itself. All of the transformations are the same thing. The opposite, taking the terms from the extreme to its beginning, is it not? In each case? Well then, uh, well then what we're doing is, hey, we're re we are replicating this, aren't we? With the one principle of recursive movement. Well, therefore the transformations of analogy are uh, moving in the fourth dimension. I'm rather curious. Transformations of analogy. That's fun. We have done nothing but show the transformations of the inertial analogy oh, okay. following a recursive movement. Oh, recursive okay. is turning it upon itself. Oh, that's an additional term. Do, do you find that interesting? That yeah. sure. this is the only form because all the others are taking it in a similar way. Therefore, that is unique. All of these are the same. What? That is, C is to B is B is A. 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 Yeah. Um, would you, would you um, be able to do, make an example of an analogy? It's a bit, too abstract for me with yeah, okay. Um, well, this one. Um, uh, okay, let's get the best one. I like this one. Grand, grandparent is to the parent as the parent is to the child. Is it not true that a parent transmits to the parent as the parent then becomes, in a similar way, the parent of a child? Yes. This is a transmission of teaching through generations. It follows this mean analogy. A is to B is B is to C. So then, uh, what would that... Or mean? numbers, or numbers, right? Two is to four as four is to eight. I'm just wondering what the 
symmetrical transformation would look like, or what would be the significance of it for the grandparents? And okay, parents? then it's saying repeatedly, and all of the others, that there's also equally true a child is to his parent as his parent is to his grandparent. So you're looking at it, you're looking at it uh, going up, going down. Right? Uh, if you want to say, grand, this is, if this is the classic model, then naturally taking it backwards, right? This is going from the child to the parent. Therefore, that's progressive. Right? The way this is, it is descending. Is it not? Yeah. You can put that in terms of numbers. So, two is to four is to eight is progressive, increasing, as eight is to four is four is to two is decreasing. So then, where is the reversion? Where's the reversion with the parents? Where, where, I, I'm trying to see where the reversion is, or the, the fourth dimension. We have to say more about it before I open my mind. Before I open my mind. I'm trying to um, see within the example of parents and children and grandparents oh. um, where the recursion happens. Oh. The recursion is taking, okay, if this is what it is, recursion is taking it backwards. You'd have to reflect on it. Now, please. I would think that you'd have to then reflect on those uh, points. That's true. So that when you take the child over to the other side or the parent, yeah. then you're going, you're, as I understood what you said, you're you're taking it in itself. So each of those points would be looking at those particular... Okay, okay. okay. do it this way then. Uh, if you want to know the consequences of this analogy, it's its transformation. Then you can look at it, you can look at this progression from the view of the child. What we did just a few minutes ago is to look at the child Right, Eric? Right? His vision of his parent. And would it not be interesting to find out that his parent got his teaching from his grandfather and it's the same damn thing? And that's symmetry. That's symmetry. And that's the fourth dimension. Yeah. You know, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, Here, there are two kinds of symmetry, right? Right, yeah, go ahead. You were talking about the Timaeus and how Zeus turns upon, you know, <laughs> looks to his own model within, and the, and it's a principle of analogy that he's looking to, and if that's the case, then he's able to, from that, he produces the universe. That's right. If that's the case, then we're seeing a generation occurring from uh, an and an analogy okay, to, but, I would say, a fourth dimension by doing that. No. The gener generation is the fourth dimension. No. And, and the time is... is um, no. No. Yeah, I'm not saying it correctly. The demiurgos, or Zeus, right? He focuses on his own mind and generates the cosmos and the all. And the all means uh, he generates the cosmos as well as the principles that are presupposed in the creation of the cosmos. Right? So this really is Zeus is to the, uh, him the, uh, focusing on his own mind is to his mind as his mind, his mind 
same thing, is to the mind's creation. Right? Now, uh, if you do this, you see, then this is cosmology. But this is, by contrast, what the mind generates as its own creation is the pathologos. Well, that's what we create. So, uh, again, this is high, this is low. And you can study the pathologos, and you can discover that the mind's creation emerges from one's mind. But where does that come from? That must come from its source. which is the nature of mind itself, which is Zeus. Is that, wow, okay. is that the, um, I don't like it, but yeah. Is, is, Sir? Can we say that that is the greatest power of analogy, is to be able to use, for example, a lower, the lower side of the analogy to understand the higher? Yes, and if you don't have the, if you don't happen, if you haven't been, if you haven't explored the nature of analogy, it's greatly handicapped. Right, because like what, see, the, this is the cosmology. If you want to get in metaphysics, then uh, the self uh, is to uh, its creation. Right? Um, as the self can create its creation. Right? Same thing. Right? Yeah. Because for Plato, it's the self that uh, the self that is the source of its own creation. And in its creation, it returns back to itself. Or put it this way, uh, the one self, as he calls it in the Parmenides, right, is to the brilliant light of being, Right, this is the mystical state, mis brilliant light of being, divine luminosity. And that brilliant light of being is to the sun. In the Republic. Therefore, the source of, now it's not our sun, but any, any and all possible suns, right, or the principle of the sun. <laughs> so therefore, as this is to this, so this is to this. So the source of every sun in the galaxy can be attributed to the divine luminosity or brilliant light of being is to the one self. So if or if you use an old copy of Plato, they call that the one, but they skip the word self. So if we were to, under, if we fully grasp how the mind creates the pathologos, we can also apply those dynamics to the creation. Of, of, that's quite correct. To creation. Right. Because why is that true? Because <clears throat> uh, take these two. Right? Uh, why is it that with Eric's story, his parents 
must have at that moment when they gave him that pathologos, they must have looked most real, sincere, what he called compassionate. But they had to appear most ideal, believable. Well, this stands to a young person similar to this. Right. And therefore, in that state, they generate the pathologos. Which they themselves have been taught by their parents, 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 parents. And the logos? Yeah. The yeah. logos, not the pathologos. Yes, you then, find on yes. The other side. Now, the logos, okay, the same way now. Inherent in the experience, this experience, inherent in that experience, people say, oh, you mean beauty itself. Oh, ultimate reality. The mind knowing the mind. Right? But the key, the key, the key thing that everyone who experiences this comes away with, that what they are really saying is that they realize it is inherently intelligible. And this becomes the metaphysical standard for intelligibility. Wait a minute. That means the source of the intelligible is the Logos. Therefore, inherent in the brilliant light of being are all of these terms. They are inferred from this experience. And the chief idea that emerges out of that inherent property is the Logos, which then is the source of all rational systems and the order of the universe, etc., etc. No. It's, uh, it's fascinating that we are using the Logos or applying the Logos, which is the higher part of the analogy, to the lower in order to get out of the lower. It has the same relationship. It's seen as true intuitively. Every, everybody's pathologos. It seems that that's obvious. Uh, how can their parents fool them? They look so real and magnificent. They seem sincere. I mean... The same quality. Yeah, you see, the whole family's culture is in the palm of your hand. Every kid has the power of the whole tradition of their family in the palm of their hand. Mm. All they have to say is bullshit. Yeah. Hey, you believe that, Pop? You really believe this? <laughs> How did you ever come to believe this crap? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Come yeah. on, why don't you sit back and tell me? I'd love to know how yeah. you accepted this. I know you look good. <laughs> I've never seen you look better. You look so compassionate and sincere and knowing. But well, let's knock it off. How did you, who convinced you of this crap? He's really, they're really showing their, their reach in that they're, that's the Hey, they're taught the same thing as a truth, a family truth, a family tradition, a cultural tradition. Then the kid becomes a member of the clan until the kid wakes up and says, hey, we're, I don't like this. And then doubts it and then it challenges it. Yeah. But go ahead, I should it's, talk it's, too much. It seems kind of almost like a risk for the parents to do that. Yeah, would you agree that everything in a person's life follows from their pathologos? Yeah. Look here, yeah. it's an imagination superimposed on their reality. That's what determines all the values and their experiences. Not, not, not the reality, but what they superimpose upon it it's intertwined and it becomes one until they question it. 
like you get imprinted with something. Yeah, yeah. Branded. <laughs> That's why Homer is so important to read because throughout all of Homer, especially the Iliad, he uses the idea of self in the most brilliant way. You know, like everybody who's doing whatever they're doing, when they use the word self, that's honorific. They're showing their true self. And there, we, we don't have any work like that. Of course, you don't find it in translations, but you can stick it in, you can see it yourself. Or get the Greek and look it up. Or ask someone who knows the Greek where it is and then you can see it. It's only about a thousand places. <laughs> Now, Barbara, how many times it is in the Iliad? Do you know what that? 1600, didn't we find 16? Huh? I thought we found 1600. Now, 1600, but then there's a qualification of that, I think. That knocks it down, you mean? No, let's keep that. Only 1600 times, that's not many. <laughs> I mean, that shows it's not important. What? See, that's Greek philosophy. Greek philosophy is all in nature about the soul. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not 1600, it's, it's... Yeah, the one soul. Because there's two form, two words that come yes. up in the search, autika and uh, autain, neither of which are related to, directly to autos Good. and its declension. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I, like I like that in, in your extreme that the guy who Mary's hanging out. Wait a minute. With. What? You're going to talk about your dream? No. Oh, why not? I said Eric's dream. Oh, I thought maybe you had one. Oh, you don't want me to talk about his dream? Oh. Not if you have your own. Okay. <laughs> Pierre, you said there was two kinds of symmetry? Pardon me? What were the two kinds of symmetry again? Do it again. The two kinds of symmetry? Oh, well, yeah. There's a symmetry to a pathologist. It has an order, it's predictable, mm -hmm. it's definitive, right? It looks real, it's a shadow, it's a shadow of the real. Therefore, it's a pathologist. It's a sick belief of the soul. And what's the other symmetry? Physical? That's, but see, that has a, it's predictable, it's definable, it can be structured, it has its own language, it's a private language, everyone has a private language for the pathologos, therefore it has a symmetry to it. A low level, but like, wouldn't you agree that every person who has a child that has some mental deficiency, they would love them to have a problem, a pathologos. Because, because you need a certain level of, yeah, it's, it's, of, of intelligence function that's in order right. to have a problem. That's really? right. You have to so, have a certain yes. level of intellectual comprehension to have a problem. That's why they always start right before, hey, the most problems occur between, you know, five and eight, you know, five and seven. And going, going into school is critical, depending upon what school you go into as more or less. Oh. How, how do you resolve bodily pathologies? Like something taught through the body rather than through what kind of, by word? Yes, keep saying more about it. Like instead of like say pathology through, like a false belief taught through the body rather than taught through vocal beliefs, how do That's you resolve true. those? And it affects the body, it affects the throat, very right, and you right. carry that for the rest of your life whenever you come into a situation similar to the a, right. a neutral Introduction, okay. yeah. To add to that, you put words on that, on right. the elements of the body that you're affected, is affecting you. Right, but uh, like, but what about like uh, Like what you did with the mm -hmm. neck mm -hmm. and the head. Right. So you add words to those, and it'll help you trace back the, the state of mind. So this kind of state does not exist in animals or like in pre-linguistic man? No, no, as a matter of fact. <laughs> It's likely if that condition that you had were uh, unexamined over your life, you'd end up with problems in the throat and the chest, right, and the neck. And mm -hmm. 
different kinds of cancer, right? Mm -hmm. Because the con being in that state of mind of a pathologist has somatic impact, right. and over time that manifests itself in various diseases. Yeah. Mm. Would you believe that? Uh, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, yes. Mm -hmm. Why does she say that so sincerely? <laughs> Let's see how many times I've been in the hospital. Yeah, you've seen it. Many times. Yeah. Direct connection. Yeah. Living, we live our, well, I, doctors are here to treat our pathologos. Yeah. You're somewhat of a master of... Of pathologos and doctors. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it cute, isn't it cute? more... Isn't I'm it curious that, that I'm hold it, hold it. I find it curious that the, the symmetry between right, you have the logos and then the pathologos, and like, where did this first begin? Or you know, this image, like it, it, it's a. Uh, when um, did it begin? Go well, ahead. I was wondering, and then it, it seems like. Um, I mean, that's what's happening all here, right? With with the parental giving an appearance of that real mm -hmm, state. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it's that appearance generating this problem. Yes. Um, and you're asking? Well, it just, it, it very much seems like that's what is occurring here, that in one form or another, you're trying to get clear on the real, what's actually real. Right, right. right. Just well, the symmetry between them two is very interesting to me, and it's. Uh, it, um, it, hey, it has its own logic, has its own images, can be communicated, and each family recognizes that one has accepted it. Therefore, there's an instant communication and recognition of its pattern that you accept. That is but, totally, totally unknown to an outsider. But it, it could have. It could have gone the other way. That's like true. You're right. actually teaching genuine, the genuine. Yes. What does that do to the family? Well, I'm wondering what it does to all of mankind. If, you Good. know what I mean? Just if it was the other way, like, yes. and and it was not a pathos, right? And there was actually genuine. Uh, Finish it? Te genuine learning and then, genuine teaching. And you're asking what would follow if that were the case? Well, it's just very interesting to me. Like, because, because, come on, keep going. It Stay seems, on, it it's going to it, ask me. No, no, I, I have, it seems the, the grounds for being here are not being clear on that state. Like, that's why you come here. Mm -hmm. It seems like to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know, what do you guys no, think? No, <laughs> no. Not being clear about that state means to you, go ahead. Well, that's, that's why you were born, I think. Like, it seems like that is the uh, precursor for yes. possibly coming into a body here. Right, right, right. Because look at the ramifications that happens like <laughs> Yeah, so the, the only question that you want to know, which you're not going to answer unless you do some curious kind of thinking, is, um, is it possible that when you were born, that's the very kind of family you needed to be born in to experience that particular pathologos? And therefore, every birth presents you with a unique kind of learning that you need for your own destiny into the next and next reincarnation. No, go further. Hey, not only the family, but their, their own background matches the pathologos that you're going to get. The culture, the religion, the political system, the jobs your parents have, the experiences they have, fits uniquely with the pathologers they're going to dump on you that you need from your own psychic development throughout all time. So every time you are reborn, 
you're facing a new, different kind of pathologos that you have to work your way through. Unless you decide to do the unusual thing, which is what Jeff talks about. Jump. Which is, how, how can you see the solution to not just the particular pathologos, but to any pathologos, then you're free of it. And if so, then you come back like Trump. No, no, no. <laughs> That's heaven for me. Huh? Huh. See, that's the Tibetan Book of the Dead. That's the remarkable feature of the Tibetan Book of the Dead. For they, they believe, in principle, everything I just said is true. That your next birth has to match your own psychic past. You need that family. You were, you were born into that family because that's what you needed to learn for your own psychic development over all time. That includes the particular family, the religion, the country, everything. And your number in the family, the position you are in the family, equally plays a role, whether you're male or female. Good book, by it the way, in case you ever wonder about it. It seems to me, though, that within a philosophical tradition like this one, ours, um, you can, uh, now I'm going to move into the Tibetan or the Buddhist terminology. Uh, you can slow that wheel using putting the mind onto the path of Lotus. That's right. So that you're not creating new karma to jump into the next life. Yeah. Instead, you're using understand, un understanding to unwind the karma. Yeah. And it seems to me you would uh, have fewer lifetimes left as a result. You'll, you'll, you'll progress yeah. spiritually much faster. Yeah. Yeah. So even if you die without knowing, the only thing in the next world you meet is someone who's going to say, hey, uh, what did you discover? Are you going to be here? What you discovered is you were stuck in your problem. That's what you needed to see. Oh, good to get back. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, it has to fit. Otherwise, we're in an irrational world. Right. <laughs> I was just wondering, as you were talking, once the self recognizes the error or the fault in this physical form we're in, once it transitions into whatever it is. Yeah. Because I think you mentioned that you kind of burn, uh, born again and then experience yeah. whatever that yeah. issue is. Go ahead, you're but, on a good But when, 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 wouldn't the self, when it's transitioning, kind of know itself? You know, like, be, be pure. Well, that's, see. It, I know it's hard to Everything change. changes after that. Mm -hmm. No, why? Yeah. Why? Be be because, because? Because we're here. We're in this physical form. No, no. If you discover the self, what would follow about that person's existence? Well, say, um, you know Brad? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. He told me that he had a very profound insight into the self, so I wanted to know how that affected his own pathologos. What do you think he would say? Uh, he would probably say it's, it's great, but maybe for a moment and he comes back into his reality? See, it has to... It has to be solved. No, no enlightenment experience will affect the pathologos. Oh, I didn't mean to rain on, on it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just speaking of uh, reality too, probably. Without <laughs> reflecting, it's a waste, you know, it requires reflecting. Mm -hmm. And it's impact, and you need to continue to do that. Because it, you lose it, it. Hey, it's a, it's a, see, a pathologos imitates, it's a, it pa parallels enlightenment experiences. It's that profound. Yes. That, that actually then, that shows the rationality, actually, right? That, that shows the rationality of the universe. Yes. Right? Like, yes. Yeah. 
So it's and, actually and that the self must be discovered, not taught, must be discovered. <laughs> Curious, isn't it? Very. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, if you don't like it, just talk to Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Right. You have a couple of good answers. Not tonight. All right. At least not so far. <laughs> Pierre, could we could we quickly go over? Yeah. If we go back a page. Sure. Um, I hate to bring it to the mundane, but uh, we started with a face on a on a cube. Um. Rather than going to the parents and the grandparents and numbers, um, Eric was bringing up the bodily. Um, does this happen in nature? It, uh, you're showing us that it seems to happen in nature. Our own bodies seem yeah, to embody right. this. And so what would be that recursive code? What, what, what? what would be the recursive code that's kind of doing this in nature? Could this change biology? Code? Yeah, like, could we do biology through analogy? Thank you for asking. Wouldn't you agree, if someone is familiar with mathematics, they should be able to give us a talk about symmetry? Uh. (laughs) 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 See, that's what Noether generated, the, the most remarkable woman in the history of mathematics. She made... She created the formula for symmetry and showed intrinsically symmetry is a necessary part of the nature of reality. One formula. And Jeff is going to give a talk on it. Oh, there's a woman? Yeah, Yeah, Yes, Noether. Emily, I believe it was first name, Emily Noether, uh, 20th century physicist, highly under under-recognized, uh, saw symmetry in essentially everything, yeah. and worked with people from many different fields, uh, catapulting their careers by uh, showing each of them how uh, there was symmetry in each of their And Einstein areas. said she was the most remarkable yeah. mathematician of the, of the 20th century. And nobody, to this day, nobody, still, yeah. nobody knows her. Yeah. But you're going to give a talk on her next week? Well, I've never read anything from her. Everything I know about her, I've heard from Pierre or Wikipedia. But... <laughs> <laughs> Ask That's a beautiful formula. We need someone to come in and talk about it. He'll do it sooner or later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hopefully sooner. Sooner, sooner. Yeah. Does that answer your question about... Uh, by, I, would, I would assume now biology works based on analogy. Yeah. Nature itself. Yeah, too bad. Yeah, what they've done with teaching and biology. Well, the, when when you uh, look at a cell, when there's an impregnation of the sperm into the cell, what's the first thing that happens to the to the egg? Right, it splits. No, it doesn't. It turns in. Mm. But you should do that again. It turns inward. Right, right, and before it goes out. So it produces. Did you do it over? A sperm hits the egg. The egg oh. turns inward. It doesn't go outward. It turns. It doesn't split. It turns inward, mm-hmm. and it actually creates two two parts. Then that's what they call splitting. But it's two parts. But it has to do with go inward first. We, we so that would it. make it. That would like move the. It would be a transformative. It would be a recursive movement. Is that your way of saying Nancy's outside? We got, we got a, a family Uber <laughs> waiting. See, <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, did you get into the primitive streak and egg, egg bio, uh, embryology? Uh huh. Talk about it. Primitive streak? Oh, I. No. Oh. Uh, when you say primitive streak, what do you mean? That's the name for the first organized development in, in Czech embryology from which all the cells emerge in the progression of the future Czech. Okay, did I ever do that or study it? Yes. Yeah. Was it in that form, in that way of talking about it? No. Oh. <laughs> See, unfortunately, years ago, 
when I was at Golden West College, uh, I talked to, had a friend of mine who's a biologist, and I said, look, you guys are teaching biology in the wrong way. So we talked and talked, and he said, oh, I know how to do it. And he, he went off and he got a grant. And subsequently, it was all computerized. And therefore, students could literally march into each one of these niches, the little desk that had a particular display of a particular development in biology. The only trouble was, we found out, I did a study on it, we found out that students who originally thought they might major in biology all quit <laughs> and changed their major because while it was effective in learning, it was boring as hell. They took the mystery out of it. They never encountered a biologist and therefore it was successfully as a failure. <laughs> Huh? What did they do to make it so boring? They made, made it all mechanical. Oh. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, make your notes, go to the next gen, one, two, three, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that wild beast. <laughs> look at that tail go. Aren't you a little bit worried? He's <laughs> Yeah. So going back to your question, that would like be turning the, that square and going no. into itself in order to produce the other half of it, which would be the symmetry. And then take this now and try to find it in every form of nature. Well, it's in every form. Right. But if you take a look at how the cell, as you call it, splitting, it's not split. Sure. It goes inward. Yeah, I like that. This is the recursion. Follows, that follows and us. That's recursion. Recursion. Yeah. And uh, and so more insights into the body, maybe. So to um, understand your body, you need to reflect on the state of mind that you have that associates. Mm -hmm. See, what's interesting is the the black hole phenomenon is the problem of recursive. The what? <laughs> it's the problem of the recursive movement, the black holes. Oh, the black holes. Right? It, right. it pulls everything within itself. Now, w what happens at the other end? See, that's what they, that's what they have to figure out. Yeah. That's because they only have one part of the mystery. Okay, now, what happens? Does it produce a couple of them? That's so interesting. I, I think I've seen a model of that in a book once. Yeah, yeah. called... Yeah. <laughs> because, see... Because the only thing that pers the only thing that escapes it is the order of the particular organism or galaxy or star. So information order. can escape it. Did you say it can or intelligence can, can escape it? Intelligence and order. <laughs> what 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 kind of form does that take? Like. I'd like to answer your question, but I don't uh, you see say, the fullness of it. Go ahead. You say that the only thing that escapes it is the order or the intelligence of it. But what kind of form does that take? I haven't heard of that before. Well, it's, it's, it's what they have literally discovered is the end of the universe, of each and every universe, has the same fate. It will all be consumed in a black hole. Well, it has such magnetic powers because of its incredible density that everything is attracted to it. Planets, even galaxies, finally. Where does it go if it then disappears? Does that, is that the basis for a new creation? That's the part they haven't done yet. Or a, or a parallel, uh, yeah. or like a parallel it's huge in a universe. huge way. Parallel universes. Parallel. Like, does that therefore, as it descends in the black hole, is that the birth of a new form? 
that would not be physical? Maybe the black hole is like the... Death. The death. Full. Therefore, out of death, is there a new birth? If it's a new birth, then you need some kind of material in order to generate it and a model for it, don't mustn't do. However, perhaps it's a different form of transformation that doesn't require body. Therefore, maybe the result of that is that an elevation into a non-physical universe or intelligible universe without the physical bodies. So the black hole is like the, mid the middle of the analogy with the four dots. That, you know, the black hole is really death. As death is to us, so the black hole is to the cosmos. Death is to us, so the black hole is to the cosmos. As our life is to our death, there's a possibility of a new form of being or reincarnation in our world, agree? Uh, when the we possibility die. of reincarnation follows death, does it not, that idea? Right. Mm -hmm. It either is or it isn't. Right. But nonetheless, use that as a model. Now, what if death is like at the entry of stars into a black hole? That is their death. Might that not then produce a new condition for a rebirth? Mm -hmm. That would be non-physical. Or maybe it'd be another physical universe. One or the other is going to happen. What, what? This is what uh, uh, Penrose and uh, Hawking were talking about. Ooh, I like this stuff. I just don't know. Yeah. <laughs> where, does, where, does, where does the idea that it's non-physical, that it may be non-physical, where does that idea come from? Like, because it's like anagogic or something? It came from a, 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 a prize in a cracker box. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, think, I was thinking that if, you, if you have death, well, I don't know, in terms of yes. a body. We, make your last one. If, if the body represents a form of a pack of logos, since that's what we have, then in some way, what would be an alternative if you didn't have a path or you didn't get rebirthed into a body? Where would the mind be? Or well, it was essential take for a form. that you need a body to have a path mm -hmm. Since but it's a physiological condition for its continuation. Mm -hmm. But if you saw through all your path logos, right. then what Well, no, you wouldn't have a body that's inhibited by the power of ignorance, creating disorder. Oh, so you can body. still have a body? Yeah. Oh, okay. It would be a great body. It would be a great body. <laughs> <laughs> Better than mine. Thank See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Tomorrow, Thank where, you. Where, where, where will you be tomorrow morning? My house. At your house. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Jeff. Good saying hello? Yeah. Pleasure? Yeah. Great, Eric. Man. Good, to Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Thank you.